Ian Berridge is 16. He lives at Upton near Poole in Dorset. He's been playing the violin now for more than nine years. Melanie Sylvester lives in Bournemouth and she's 18. She's been playing the cello since she was 10 years old. When Melanie and Ian started to play, they were very young children with no great thoughts of a career. Now they're on the edge of the unknown world of professional music, waiting and working for the chance to get inside. And they're not alone. This is Sarah Nolan from Parkston. She's also 18 and she's been studying the violin for seven years. And the boy with the horn, 17-year-old Troy Smith, has been playing horns of different kinds for the past eight years. To help him on a bit, if necessary, there's his 18-year-old sister, Tracy, who plays the viola and keeps an eye on the time. You finished? Yeah, almost. I'll keep sticking. Well, it's half past eight. You best hurry. The Smiths live in Bournemouth, but the bus they're hoping to catch will take them to Poole. And in Poole, to be precise, in St Andrew's Hall at Bournemouth and Poole College of Further Education, they'll find 70 or so others like themselves. For this is the home of the Wessex Youth Orchestra, and this is the day before the concert. The Wessex Youth Orchestra is now 12 years old. Its members come, by audition only, from the whole of the county of Dorset, although nearly half are from the college, which provides the facilities and the money. The director of music is Donald Riddell. The night, the night before the concert, what can, we, what can we achieve? Well, first of all, we can remind ourselves that we can play it. And secondly, we can adjust to some slight changes of position. We've got seven people who've come back to help us out. Very nice to see you. Welcome. If I haven't actually said hello to you, it's because we're a little bit concerned with one or two other matters. Ready for the dam busters? Now, remember what we said about speeds. Don't forget the gentling of the speed at letter three, at figure three. And brass helped me to pick it up to tempo one when you get two before five. No overplaying, lots of contrasts, high fortes, low diminuen, low pian pianissimo. Here we go. Still. Still. He came home from school one day with a cello from school and said, to, I want to play this, and um, he's gone on from there. Unfortunately, we've had to buy the instruments, and uh, uh, that's not been all that easy, but uh, he, he's really enjoyed it. Music is a terrific leveller of all social classes apart from anything else. 
and it's uh, an interest that lasts them through the whole life so that no matter what part of the world they're working in or what job they're doing at the time they can always find an amateur orchestra if they're not a professional musician they can always find an amateur orchestra to work with side of the symbol after you've hit it right don't be ashamed of it you're a little girl but they're big symbols eight into eleven one two 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 this is me playing the symbols again uh, how long have you been in the orchestra been in this orchestra for three years mm -hmm. before that um i was in the junior orchestra for two years then i came into here and you're in the first violins? Yes. Now, you're playing with a lot of older children, aren't you, who've been yes. playing a long time. Did you find that a little bit um, worrying? Were you, were you at all put off when you first joined the um, orchestra? I wasn't put off uh, to them, but for the music, because mm -hmm. it's quite difficult. How difficult? I mean, did, was it something you've never seen before? Yes. And so you had to learn it the hard way? Yes. But you like music, obviously. Yes, I do. And you listen to music at home? Yes. You, do you want to be a musician? Yes, I'd like to be a professional. So you're, going to, you're not going to stop with the Wessex Youth Orchestra then when you're old enough, it's on to something else, is it? Yes. Now, Mark, you, you play a very difficult instrument. Would you like to hold it up so we can all see what it is? And tell us what exactly it is. This is a French horn. And it's a pretty tough thing to play, isn't it? Yes. Why did you choose it? Well, there were these horns about the house and I used to play notes on them and I just carried on and I've got to hear. How do you mean there were horns about the house? It well, makes it sound like a cattle farm. <laughs> Well, my dad, he has lots of horns and he just leaves them about. Your dad's a horn player then, is yes. he? Ah, I see. If you're a wind player, especially, um, your entire be all and end all is devoted to playing in an orchestra, if not with other people. You know, there's very little interest in just playing at home. And you certainly notice that the children who get on fastest are the ones who are in ensembles, even if it's a very small ensemble in the school. So I think these children in the youth orchestra are fantastically lucky that they've got a complete symphony orchestra that they can play in at a, an early age. You're a brass player, and most brass players, in my experience, either come from the Salvation Army or the brass band movement. Which are you? I come from the brass band. Do you play in a brass band as well? Yeah, huge band. Which do you prefer there? Orchestral playing, definitely. And what is it about the orchestra that gives people such a kick? Uh, well, in the brass section, there's only four trumpets in our section and there's more responsibility uh, you're the only one playing your piece of music whereas in brass bands there's usually a group of cornet players playing the same piece of course you can make a lot of noise too can't you yeah there. a lot <laughs> which must give you some pleasure yeah blast the rest of them out of the way <laughs> Day out for the percussion in Josef Strauss's fireproof polka. And in this orchestra, timpanist and percussion players share and share alike. It's generally regarded in large symphony orchestras as two separate sections. But in the Wessex Youth Orchestra, it's, uh, uh, the timpanists have an evenly balance of timpani playing and percussion playing, so it's all fairly spread out around the section. When you're finished with the Wessex, and presumably you're going to finish fairly soon, um, you're going to, going on to be a professional percussionist? I'm really not sure yet. Uh, my main interest is in modern music and synthesised sound and percussion playing. And obviously the instrument I play is very much connected with modern music. Everything I've learned about music, really, is, has been in the orchestra. Before, in brass bands, I just learn to play, but uh, the orchestra tends to make you more of a musician than just a player. The soloist in Max Brooks G minor violin concerto is to be Duncan Riddell, Donald Riddell's son. He came up through the ranks of this orchestra and became its leader. Then he led the European Community Youth Orchestra. Now, in his early 20s, he's building a career in chamber music and as a concerto soloist.
one, two, three, four, and your entry. So the pause bar before A. Right. I'm having a little difficulty in judging the entry after the last note. Still too slow. You have to do a lot of listening in rehearsal. The accents on. And you might as well have not had the accents there. Other people's problems, perhaps. But it can be your problem if you don't keep your eye on your part and know exactly where the next bit's going to begin. They're very quick youngsters because they're so enthusiastic, but of course um, they'll pick it up once you've told them. They don't uh, pick it up while it's happening. Um, it's, I think it's a case of, you know, while trying to play their part as well as they can, uh, it's, it's, it's only with age and experience that you begin to pick up the ability to play your own part well and have one eye on the conductor and one ear and another eye on the soloist as well. But you still find it a pleasant experience to come back and play in front of this orchestra. Oh, yes. I love it. It's fantastic. How do you choose your repertory? I noticed, for example, you programmed Mahler's first symphony not long ago. Well, there's nearly an hour of very difficult music. Yes. Isn't that a bit ambitious for a bunch of kids? I think this is the most difficult part of being a conductor of a youth orchestra. Because one has to stretch them a little, but not too far, so that they break down one has to keep an eye on the public reaction. Uh, we play in large concert halls, and that means a big budget. It can cost 12, 1,400 pounds to put on a major concert. And therefore, if I go too far away from the public taste, I am then in financial trouble. Um, we do modern works, we do 20th century works, but we have an eye all the time on what is going to bring in a large audience. If attention sometimes wanders, players' interest during rehearsals can be maintained with graphic demonstrations by the conductor. Two main points. After C, in, oh, I don't know, 10, 12, 40 bars, something like that, we've got the stringendo. Now, the stringendo is not gradual. We agreed that it would be a change of pace. And woodwind players coming down in crotchet, we want ba da dee da, ba da dee da. You mustn't break it up, we don't want ba ba pee ba. A da dee da, ooh. He, it's like an arch, you see. And the worst thing of all was after the pure uh, vivo, after D, we have all that sound and fire and fury, and we practiced last week going um ta, um ta, um ta, um ta, ha, ah, mm. Yeah? And it's, a, it's like lifting a weight that needs effort. Ah, bam, and then you place it. You don't go, hmm, ha, hmm, right? As if there's nothing in there. That's like the strong man lifting a balloon that's painted black instead of a weight, yeah? You just charge through, and it was a great disappointment. As a professional musician conducting an amateur youth orchestra, don't you ever have any lingering yearnings for the LSO or...? A professional orchestra? No, oh, I'm much too old to have lingering yearnings. <laughs> uh, I think the, the answer here is that one has to be realistic. There is a point beyond which a youth orchestra cannot go. But every year I'm surprised because that is a little bit higher than it was the year before. But this is the day after, and it is the time of the concert. For some, the comparatively smooth years in the Wessex Youth Orchestra are coming to an end. For those who are going into music, the unknown beckons. For Donald Riddell, it means a time of beginning again.
it's a curious thing, you know. We lose 15 or 16 players every year. They go off to universities, to conservatoires, polytechnics, and we bid them a fond farewell, and I get very depressed over the summer, and yet every autumn, the starting point is a little bit higher than it was a year ago. And I think I've sussed this out, because someone coming into uh, an orchestra like this, this year, will accept that we play at that level. And therefore, they relate their effort and their own practice and their own ambitions to that. So we creep just a little higher every year. And that is what keeps me going anyway. No, LSO, no thank you. This Saturday morning concert was an experiment intended to tempt the shopping population of Poole in from its labours for an hour and a half and send them out happy. But concert hall conventions are still observed, which means white blouses, long skirts, dinner jackets, black ties. <laughs> <laughs> Less than half of the young people who make up this orchestra will go on into professional music making. Violinists and bassoonists and trombonists will become accountants and hairdressers, secretaries, insurance salesmen and probably television producers. But all these different people will have some useful things in common. The disciplines of music are peculiar, but it probably helps if you can listen and watch and think all at the same time, even if you don't always get the notes right. And the old saying is doubtless true, that the pleasures of listening to music are exceeded only by those of playing it. But beyond all this, there is one thing that has lured performers of all kinds and all ages. Prima donnas are enraptured by it. Retired entertainers suffer withdrawal symptoms without it. It is probably the one single reason why people go into the entertainment business, and it is, of course, the applause of the crowd.
The concerto's composer, Max Brook, died in 1920, aged 82. He would have been astonished to know that his music could be so professionally performed by a band of schoolchildren. They have an excellent opportunity to get to know real music really well. There's an old saying that if you want to learn something, teach it. One could say in music, if you want to understand some music, play it. They have the opportunity of getting inside symphonies like Mahler One meeting excellent soloists and further to that they have to realize that they must be able to subdue their own individuality to ensemble playing and this is an extra discipline to go with everything else that's been involved all the practice that they've done um, the hours of rehearsal being on time is quite difficult for some young people and I think thirdly there is something about making a good performance of a piece of music that is difficult to match anywhere else. If you like, it's a kind of an emotional high, I think is the current phrase. And at the end of a good concert, they should feel about six inches above the ground. And I think a lot of our young people do. They certainly seem to.